الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم أما بعد So we finished this sixth statement uh, where Imam Abu Ja'far al-Tahawi rahimahullah ta'ala he said that Allah Azza wa Jal or part of our belief in Allah Azza wa Jal is that He is ancient without any beginning remaining forever without any end like we said, this is in the meaning of an awwal wal akhir, the first and the last, as Allah Azza wa Jalla told us in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Habib al Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, we said one of the things that we caution against is we said that this does not mean that al Qadim here. It does not mean that al Qadim. Yeah, out of ink, right? Okay. Anyway, so ancient and, and remaining, qadim and that, that does not mean that this is a, a name of Allah. And like I said, madhab ahl sunnati wa jama'ah with respect to the names and attributes is to say that the name has to be mentioned or the attribute has to be mentioned in an ayah or a hadith, right, for it to be considered as a name or attribute. Second, it has to have a complete and perfect meaning, right? No defect can be attributed to that name or attribute from any aspect, right? Like we said, for example, for old, we said that can mean, or it is conceivable, that even if you describe something as old, that something preceded it. That's why the Imam, rahimahullah ta'ala, he actually had to actually add to it without any beginning. Had he mentioned that awwal, he didn't need to say without any beginning because the awwal is means the oldest, right? There's nothing before it. And the last nothing after, after it. And the third one is that it can be used to invoke Allah Azza wa Jalla. Right? To call upon Allah Azza wa Jalla. So for it to be a name. Like Al-Aziz. You say, Ya Aziz. Ya Kareem. Right? Ya Rahman. Ya Rahim. But you cannot say Ya Qadim. <coughs> Or, oh, you Qadim, can I say that, right? right? So this is why it is, it is not a name of Allah Azza wa Jal, nor is it an attribute of Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, the other thing is that we say also that the names and attributes, Ya Akhwan, is like Allah Azza wa Jal, perfect in every, in every aspect and in every, uh, from every uh, yani direction you look at it. And that's why we say, for example, you know, that the knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal, so like we said about Allah, we say Allah is the awwal, is the first, and He is the last. Likewise, His knowledge is first and last. And likewise, His creation is first and last. And likewise, His mercy is first and last. What does that mean? It means that Allah Azza wa Jal had these attributes and names, right? Since ever. Yani there was no time when Allah Azza wa Jal did not know and then he learned. There was no time in, 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 in you know, there's, there was no point in time when Allah Azza wa Jal was merciful and then he became merciful. Was not merciful and then he became merciful. Likewise, there was no time, no point in time when Allah Azza wa Jal, right, was not capable of creating and then he became a creator. He has been created all along even before creating the creation. This is what it means first. It means that Allah Azza wa Jal since ever can be described as a creator even before creating the creation. Not only that, but also He did not need to create the creation to be called a creator. He didn't need to. He was a creator even if He didn't create creation. <coughs> It's not like he needed to create us to be called a creator. He was a creator even before creating any creation. So like Allah Azza wa is first, nothing before him, all of his attributes and names are likewise first and were not preceded by inability of those attributes. He knew all along. There was no point in time when he didn't know and then he learned. He was merciful even before there was something to be merciful with. 
It's not like He created us and He became merciful with us. He was merciful all along and will be merciful all along, forever. Doesn't need the creation to be attributed or to be described with those attributes. You know what I'm saying? That's the point. Okay. Moving on. Then he said, um, This is the seventh statement. He does not perish nor pass away. He does not perish nor pass away. And this is the because of the completeness and the perfection of Allah. He does not perish and he does not pass away because of his completeness and because of his perfection and because of the perfection of his life. His life is eternal and is perfect and complete. It doesn't come to an end, nor there was a beginning to his life. Right? So it is a perfect life, it is a complete life, unlike our life. And this is why we describe Allah Azza wa Jal of having an eternal life, perfect life, and a complete and a complete life. Allah Azza wa Jal, for example, says in the ayah of Surah Al-Furqan, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وتوكل على الحي الذي لا يموت وتوكل على الحي الذي لا يموت وسبح بحمده وكفى به بذنوب عباده خبيرا and rely upon the ever living who does not die upon the ever living who does not die hence he said Imam Abu Jafar he said does not perish right does not pass away, does not go, go away. So it is in the same meaning of this ayah. And rely upon the ever living who does not die and exult with his praise and sufficient is he to be with the sins of his servants acquainted. So Allah, so perish, perish or passing away does not apply to Allah right? And likewise, Allah Azza wa Jal says in the ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayat Al-Kursi, we all know it, we all memorize it, right? Allah la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum, la ta'khuduhu sinatu wa la nawm. Allah, there is no deity except Him, the ever-living, the sustainer of all existence. Neither drowsiness overtakes Him nor sleep. He's always there and always awake and always uh, knowledgeable. Likewise, Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Qasas, وَلَا تَدْعُ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرٌ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوْ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ هَالِكٌ إِلَّا وَجْهَةٌ And do not invoke with Allah another deity. There is no deity except Him. Everything will be destroyed except His face. كُلُّ شَيْءٍ هَالِكٌ إِلَّا وَجْهَةٌ Also another example is in Surah Al-Rahman. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبَقَى وَجْبُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Everyone upon the earth will perish and there will remain the face of your Lord, owner of majesty and honor. All of these ayat tells us that Allah Azza wa Jal life is eternal, is complete, is perfect, does not come to an end. Allah does not perish, nor does He pass away, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whose life is imperfect? The creation. Any type of creation that included us, that includes us, right? Their life comes to an end, right? Allah Azza wa Jal created, created us from void, from nothing. And He created us, right? And then we eventually will pass away and perish, right? Then Allah Azza wa Jal will bring us back, resurrect us into another second life, right? Where we will face the recompense, right? And then either, you know, paradise or, or hellfire or riyadu billah. So, our life is different than the life of Allah Azza wa Jal, which is perfect and which is complete. Why is Imam Abu Ja'far al-Qahawi mentioning this statement? You know, what, what brought him, what was the reason for mentioning this? He actually, from what appears, it appears that he actually mentioned this for two things. First of which, is it is an added description of Allah Azza wa Jal. It is an added description of Allah Azza wa Jal, of His complete life and His perfect life, right? And that, you know, He does not, 
perish, right? And this is actually uh, a continuation of what he, uh, you know, said before. Uh, Remember the previous statement where he said he is remaining <coughs> without any ending, right? So he is actually going further and explaining and adding to it, right? What it means that Allah does not perish. There's no ending because Allah does not perish, nor does he pass away, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second one is that some of the people of misguidance, they claimed that some of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal will cease from existing. So there will, time comes when, excuse me, some of his attributes may not apply anymore or may not be there anymore. anymore. So this is why Imam Abu Jafar is actually countering and refuting those claims and saying that Allah Azza wa Jal does not perish nor pass away in himself or his attributes. They are perfect, complete, and always exist. There's no uh, point to where they actually perish or cease from existing. And this applies to himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala, as, well as well as to his names and attributes. All of them, like himself, his names and attributes likewise do not perish nor cease from existing or go away. We actually say it that it is general and unconditional that Allah and His names and attributes are eternal, they are first and they are last. And they do not go, they do not, they do not go away. And this is because of His greatness in His Godship and His greatness in His uh, names and attributes. Uh, before moving to the next statement, that this is what we uh, can say about this statement, but before moving to the next one, F1, now that we're talking about the names and attributes, I wanted to actually kind of, you know, uh, mention something on, you know, side note, if you wish, right? Something on the, on the side. A lot of people, F1, miss the point, miss the point of believing in the names and attributes of Allah, as yani in in other words, these names and attributes are not just abstract names. You just believe in them and then you keep going. No. These names and attributes, believing in them, means that these names and attributes have consequences. And this should affect you and your behavior and how you conduct your life. Yani some people, for example, you know, they say, oh, I know that Allah is Al-Aziz, I know that Allah Azza wa is Al-Sami'i, Al-Basir, Al-Ali, Al-Khabir, expert, right? But you don't see this as reflecting in their daily lives. They keep on disobeying Allah Azza wa without any deterrent. They keep on, for example, you know, they may be shy away from disobeying Allah Azza wa in front of people when people are watching. But then when they are in the privacy of their homes or their offices or when there nobody is watching, then they do everything. Okay. What does this believe in Allah Azza wa Jal being the all-seeing, the all-hearing, the all-knowledgeable? How is that affecting you then? What is that belief in those names and attributes doing for you? Nothing. So it's not just a matter of saying, oh, I believe in Allah Azza wa and His names and attributes. If that is not actually making you more pious, more uh, righteous, and is not drawing you closer to Allah Azza wa then you're missing the point. And like I may have said in, in the past, Ya Akhwan, Yani one of the greatest attributes of the servants is shyness from Allah Azza wa Jalla. in Allah. Which is the state of the heart. The state of the heart that you feel shy from Allah Azza wa Jalla of missing something that He mandated upon you. You know that He mandated upon you prayers, five daily prayers, the time for the prayer comes. You feel shy from, from, of not offering, of missing that prayer. Likewise, you feel shy from Allah Azza wa Jal to disobey or violate some of His prohibitions. 
Where is that shyness coming from? What is what makes the person shy? It is this knowledge that Allah Azza wa Jal is overlooking over you. It is from this knowledge that Allah Azza wa Jal sees you and hears you and knows what you're doing, even if it is in the darkness of the night. This is what causes the heart to be in this state of shyness. Because it is conscious that Allah Azza wa Jal is looking over you. Let me tell you, Ahmad, very simple, subhanAllah. How many times have we seen people do something, they break the law, and the law cannot catch them, and they get away with it? The law doesn't catch everything. You may actually work for a company and do something, steal money or cheat or you know, take bribery, and your manager may never ever find out. What makes the mu'min not do that? He doesn't care if somebody is looking over him or not. He doesn't care if there is a chance he will be caught or not. He doesn't care. That's not what stops him from doing that. That's not what stops him from stealing or cheating or taking bribery or lying or deceiving. You may be a store owner, right? Where you use a scale to waste things, right? Somebody comes and purchase from you two pounds of something and you may have played around, you know, messed around with the scale and it actually says that it's two pounds but in reality it's one and a half pounds. And he's thinking that you're selling him two pounds and he's giving you the money for two pounds. When you, in reality you're only giving him one and a half pounds worth of goods. He doesn't know and he'll never find out. May never find out. But what stops the woman from doing that? Allah Azza wa Jal looking at him. Allah Azza wa Jal watching over him. That's what makes the person shy. And Wallahi ya akhwan, that is the most efficient deterrent. And how many times we say to our kids, for example, have you prayed? Oh, you didn't pray? Go ahead, pray. Sometimes we may get angry at them. But let, let me tell you something will never be always with them. They may actually go to their room and claim they prayed well, they, they never prayed. How do you find out? But if you teach and seed in your sons and daughters' heart this knowledge and the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal, the knowledge and the consciousness that Allah Azza wa Jal is never watching over them, they'll never lie to you. That's the most de 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 deterrent. They'll go to school. And that school could be a, a trip away. You never know what they're doing. Allahu Alam. What gives you peace of mind is that if they, you know that they are pious people, if you know that they are aware that Allah is overlooking in them, and you trust Allah in all matters, that's what deters them. You're not watching. This is what we need to realize. And this is the true meaning of the belief in the names and attributes. That's what it means. And actually to realize what those meaning, what the meaning of, this, of those names and attributes are. When you know that Allah is the only Razit, He is the one who sustains. Then all of a sudden, all the people becomes minuscule in your, in your mind. And you know, even though that in the end, it's the company who's paying you the pay stop, all right, the salary. But they are only a means. They're not the one who, is, who are giving you the rizq. It is Allah Azza wa Jal. When you know that Allah Azza wa Jal, for example, is the one who wrote all the decree and everything that happens in this world is something that he permitted and he knew about it. Guess what? This is what makes, by the way, the mu'min courageous. That's what makes the mu'min courageous in the face of calamities and difficulties. When you see other people collapse in, 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 when, you know, when encountered by calamities. What makes the mu'min steadfast and what makes the mu'min courageous is that they know that whatever happens to me is by the will of Allah. 
And He is the most merciful. And He is the one who preserves. I know He's testing me and He will be with me. And He will find a way for me if I am patient and pleased with what Allah Azza wa Jal wrote on me. Allah will help me. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى So this is what we need to understand. If one, I, don't, I, may, I wanted to make sure that we don't just go over the names and attributes as abstract names and this knowledge as theories. That's not the point. If we don't get affected by this, then we miss the whole point and that's, that belief is useless. And that is why one of the great sciences is to actually study the names, uh, the, the meaning of the names of Allah Azza wa Jal. And you know Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever counts, meaning that counts and memorizes them and understand their meaning and they affect his life. Whoever counts 99 names of Allah Azza wa Jal, he will enter paradise. What does that mean? It's just, just memorization? Just memory? Allahu Ahad Samad Khalid. That's it? No, that's not the meaning of the hadith. The meaning is that you count them, you memorize them, you make tadabbur in their meaning, you understand what it means, and that applies in your life. Of course, if you do that for 99 names, you will enter paradise. Allahumma amin. Thank you. Next one. Up to you. Should we start this, or do you think we should stop and open the door for maybe a couple of questions? Because we have like ten minutes. Yeah. And I think we're gonna need more than that. Yeah, I think we need to stop. Stop here. Yeah, because right. then, so. let's stop here. We'll cover this inshallah because this is actually important. Nothing occurs except what he wills. This has to do just you know if you have a heads up. This has to do with the qadar decree, and it has to do with the will of Allah and such. And we have some good material here to cover. What, is, what does it mean, the will of Allah in here? And is there one type of will or there are multiple types of will? And how does that affect the deeds of the, of the servants, right? Some people misunderstand that and may say, well, wait a minute, doesn't mean, this mean that Allah dictates and, you know, uh, forces us into what we do? Or do we have a choice of what we do? Right? And then how come that we get, you know, recompense and accountability? I know we covered some of that before, but this will be a good, you know, refreshment. And uh, inshallah, so this will be a very good discussion about the Qadar and how it relates to the will of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Thank you. Questions? Concerns? And you know that the Iman bil Qadr is one of the pillars of the belief, right? The Iman bil Qadr is one of the pillars of the belief in Allah Azza wa Jalla. Remember, we saw this before. <coughs> one, of, one of the proofs on that is what the famous hadith, the coming of Jibreel alayhi salam to teach the Ummah the religion of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Remember when he came in the shape and form of a, of a person and he sat next to the Prophet Sallallahu and he started asking Rasulullah Sallallahu He said, أَخْبِرْنِي عَلِ الْإِسْلَامِ Tell me about Islam. So he told him and then he said, فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَلِ الْإِيمَانِ He said, أَنْ تُؤْمِنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْقَدَرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِهِ Right? So this is actually one of the six pillars of Iman, and we know that there are five pillars of Islam. So this is actually pretty important, and a lot of people, by the way, miss this, or overlook it, or maybe even misunderstand it. And like I said, it is such an important topic for the Muslim, because it actually makes them more capable and stronger when going through calamities and difficulties in their life, you know, and even at, you know, at times of ease. The Iman al Qadr is so important. No. Um, there are some groups who say that they are saying the name of Allah and they just say illa, 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 and they just repeatedly say that. Is, is that correct? 
Well, that's actually what we said. It's obviously not correct. So the, the question is that some people make mentioned or dhikr of Allah that was by using il illa, yeah. Allah. Il illa. Illa. Which is... Well, so the... I mean, what we said before, right? You only mention or make dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal or invoke Allah Azza wa Jal or call upon Allah Azza wa Jal, right? Or communicate and connect with Allah Azza wa Jal only by using names and attributes that were mentioned in the Quran or in the Sunnah of Al Habib al Mustafa. Because, like I said, the aspect or the topic of Al Asma wa Sifat, names and attributes, is tawqifiyya, meaning it's not up to us to, you know, get into it and make up names and attributes. We stop and only use the ones that Allah Azza wa Jal told us about it or about them in the Quran or His Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam in the Sunnah. So we only use these names and attributes. And like we said, you know, this is actually, we are encouraged and this is what we should use the names for, to actually call upon Allah Azza wa Jal. He said, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَادْعُوهُ بِهَا To Allah belong the beautiful names, so call upon Him by inviting them, by using them. So we should, and as a matter of fact, we saw this before, which is a tawassul. Remember, tawassul to Allah Azza wa Jal. We said a tawassul is to actually invoke Allah Azza wa Jal for the purpose of achieving something. And we said there are five, sorry, five ways of permissible tawassul. One of them, was to make tawassul through the means of his names or attributes or deeds. So you can actually use, or not you can, but you're actually, you should use the names, make tawassul to Allah Azza wa Jal by, by his names. So for example, you say, Ya Ghani, Aghnini. Ghani is the self-sufficient. So you are calling upon Allah Azza wa Jal by his name, Al Ghani, which means self-sufficient to give you from his bounties. Because that has a relationship, right? Ya ghani aghnini. Yani, enrich me, give me from your bounties. You are the self-sufficient. You are the giver, right? You are a razid. You can say, for example, Ya Rahman, irham me. O merciful, have shower me with your mercy. Ya ghaffar, ighfir me. O oh, forgiving, forgive me. Right? Al Ghaffar is one of the names of Allah, right? Nuh alayhi salam, he actually said this in Surah Nuh. وَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا So he, he said, he told us, إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا Allah is Ghaffar, all forgiving. This is name, type attributes. You can make tawassul to Allah Azza wa Jal by the means. By the way, what is, what is tawassul? What does it mean tawassul? A tawassul is to use a wasila, which is the means to connect, to ask Allah Azza wa Jal for something. That is a tawassul. Yani as if you are begging Allah Azza wa Jal, you are asking Allah Azza wa Jal for to achieve something by means, by wasila of something. We said there, there are five permissible wasila, types of wasila. This is one of them, by the names, by the attributes. By the attributes, you say, Allahumma as'aluka bi rahmatika an tarhamni. Oh Allah, I ask you by your mercy, that's an attribute. I ask you by your mercy to have mercy upon me. Dua al istikhara when you actually consult with Allah Azza wa Jal. What does it say in there? Allahumma inni as'aluka bi ilmika al ghayb. Oh Allah, I ask you by your knowledge of the unseen to guide me, to show me. Is this a good, to show me if this is good, if this is something that I want to do and I'm unsure about, if this is going to be good for me in this life and the year after or not? I do not know. Why? Because I don't know the unseen. I don't know what's going to happen afterward. But Allah Azza wa Jal is all knowing. So I am actually asking Allah Azza wa Jal by His knowledge. That knowledge is what? Sifa. 
attribute by your knowledge, by your knowledge of the unseen, because you know, I do not know. So I'm asking you, if because based on your knowledge, is this something good for me or not? Guide me. That's the second one. Third one is by his deeds, by the deeds of Allah Azza wa Jal. You may make the wassal by the deeds of Allah Azza wa Jal. We actually do this in every prayer. An, an example of that is we do this in every prayer. You know that in the Jurus, in the Jalsa, in the prayer, right? What do we say? Dua al Ibrahimiyya, Salat al Ibrahimiyya. We say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. So we are making tawassal to Allah Azza wa Jal. To, to mention and to raise the status of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his household, Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Like you did, oh Allah, like you did to Ibrahim and Ali Ibrahim. So we are using his mention and praise of Ibrahim and we are asking Allah azza wa jal, please do the same thing to Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. So we're using his deed, which is praising Ibrahim and Ali Ibrahim, as a means to ask him to do the same thing to our beloved Muhammad, beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is from the permissible tawassul. And there are four others. We talked about this before, but this is in relation to what we are talking about here. Names and attributes and deeds of Allah. So, yes. Yeah. They should be used. But to use something that was not mentioned, invented, no, this is wrong. How do you know that this is the name of Allah Azza wa Jal? How do you know that this is a attribute of Allah Azza wa Jal? How do you know? We know if when Allah told, tells us, sorry, we never saw Allah Azza wa Jal. We don't know our His attributes and His names had He not told us. We know because He told us in the Quran. He told the, his messenger told us in the sunnah. This is how we know. It's from unseen. He told us that he is Al-Aziz. He told us that he is Al-Rahman. He told us that he is Al-Rahim. Al-Wadud, Al-Ghafur, Al-Awwal, Al-Akhir, Al-Baqir, Al-Zahir. He told us that. Al-Qahir, Fawqa Ibadi. Qadir. Right? He told us that. We didn't know. We, you can't know. There's, we have no means of knowing as matter of fact. Had he not told us. Okay. Another, I think, last question, if any. No? Once, twice, thrice. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim wa barak ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barak ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim إنك غفور رحيم اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله